Because it's your main man, E, as in Eric here. Some people thought I was saying Manny, and I'm here at my dog training property. I'm getting some dogs out in the morning time. But I wanted to talk about separation anxiety. I had a client who well, actually just some follower reach out. They were going to foster a dog that they said had separation-based behaviors. Well, here's my own dog coming out in the morning. So I wanted to talk about this because I wanted to set them up for success. They're going to foster this dog. They said maybe he has separation-based or well, they said separation anxiety. But whenever I hear people say separation anxiety, I always ask myself, is it really anxiety-based? You know, it's very common for people to assume that, hey, if the dog's crying, if the dog's whining, if the dog's trying to chew things up when they're in their crate or when they're alone, they must be anxious. And although this might be, hey, no, might be correct, there might be anxiety, no, I'm not letting them out yet. The reality is, more likely, if there is anxiety, it's because the dog is frustrated because what they think is the behavior that will get them to be around you, it's not working, okay? So like this guy, for example, he thinks, hey man, if I get excited, I wag my tail, I get all excited, mom, dad, they're gonna open the crate, they're gonna let me out. But I personally, I'm not gonna let him out when he's like this because he's a dog who's struggling with impulse control, he's struggling with eating things, and I need to work on this basic idea of impulse control and not just going with the immediate impulse to come out of a doorway he also can be really pushy. He can push people around by jumping on them, putting his mouth on them. So I don't want him pushing on the door. So I want to reinforce waiting calmly and not pushing. Good. Wait. Good. Engagement. He looks up at me. Okay, break. So I want the dog to understand. You wait patiently. You don't push. You look up at me. The door opens. But what if I had a dog who thought the opposite? I get excited, I start pushing on the door, I start scratching, I start barking, I start whining, and the door is gonna open. And then when they do that, the door doesn't open. Yeah, they could get very anxious because they're going, this is what works usually. I usually do this and the door opens. Why is it not working? So the most important thing to think about is just, are we creating confusion in our animal by creating a relationship in which them being demanding, pushy, um, and doing these behaviors gets them things because typically that's what we see a dog that people bring in here that has say say separation anxiety we see well a lot of times this is just a dog that's learned that these are the behaviors that get you things you bark you cry you whine that's how you get things i'm gonna take these guys down to the lower yard so you know True separation anxiety, guys, that is a whole nother thing. Like, true separation anxiety, I would say, is actually pretty rare. Break. A dog that truly physiologically is crossed over to this point where they no longer can think straight. They no longer can um, think clearly. They just, they're so out of their mind. There is, there is truly no way to get through to them. Whether you're using positive reinforcement or you're using punishment, there's no way to get through to the dog. There's no way to use food to tell them it's okay to be alone. Uh-uh, wait. No. No. But you just see how consistent... No, how consistent I am with these doorways. No. Okay. Yeah, true separation anxiety, folks, is pretty rare. Most often what we see is that a dog is crying, barking, whining in the crate, and then... The person doesn't know how to address this. They try talking to the dog. They try touching the dog, looking at the dog, staring at the dog. They try giving the dog more things when they're acting crazy. And the dog is basically being reinforced for all these crazy behaviors. So, if you're getting a dog that you think might have separation anxiety, I would say please don't jump to that conclusion because that can introduce a whole host of emotions within yourself may or may not be accurate you may be going oh my god he's anxious quick we need to tell him he's beautiful oh my god he's anxious we need to tell him he's perfect oh he's anxious we need to pet him and cuddle him so he'll feel safe 
folks, a lot of the times those that's not what increases ang that's what increases anxiety in a dog. If I have a dog that's anxious in their relationship with me or in their relationship with people, like they leave and there's anxiety. I mean, to me, that's a dog that doesn't know how to have a healthy relationship with a person. Probably doesn't even know how to be calm, truly calm around someone and truly calm not around someone. So if I had that dog that had separation anxiety, first thing I would be clear with is I am not going to create a codependent relationship with you at all. I'm going to be very objective and very neutral in my relationship as soon as I meet you. Here's where you sleep. Here's where you eat. Here's how we exercise. Here's the time and the place when we pet and everything will be very clear. There is a clear start and there is a clear stop. I will avoid any emotional feelings of um, feeling sorry for the dog. Because if I feel sorry for them or I feel bad for them, that might impart upon them that I, they may not realize I'm feeling sorry for them. They might just go, man, this person's really sad. Oh, this person's really stressed out. This person has this kind of needy vibe. And so, you know, I do see this with time, time and time again, dogs that I've rescued and I rehab and I have such a high level of success. You know, the affection and the emotional relationship comes after you have established a basic foundation of training and trust and respect. So bottom line, I mean, if you do have a dog that's doing separation anxiety or they say it's separation anxiety, the chances are it's not separation anxiety. As much as it looks crazy, the dog's barking and they're going to go, oh, but he tried to bite his way out of the crate. Oh, he tried to bark. You don't understand. He'll eat my house. I understand completely. I see this all the time. But I also understand that there are ways to address those behaviors that will stop them. And there are ways to address those behaviors that's going to make them a lot stronger. And a, a lot of times people think they're stopping behaviors. They, they're not. They're making them a lot stronger. You know, or they're kind of making excuses for behaviors. Like earlier this morning, they were pushing on the gate. And I'm like, oh man, he really has to pee. Let him out. He doesn't have to pee, guys. So, you know, try to just look at it as what are the behaviors? Is it crying, barking, whining? And, and oh, how are these behaviors going to be stopped? And am I somehow inadvertently reinforcing these behaviors? Even if earlier, as you saw, I have the dog stop and look up at me for a split second and I let him out. Like, that's the beginning of helping the dog understand you, you can't, those behaviors that you're doing, they're not going to work to get you out of the crate. Which brings me to my next thing. If the dog has separation-based behavior, you must immediately condition them to a crate and staying in a bed like this, even if it's just right next to you. Because your best chance is conditioning that dog to be like the safe crate is a safe place a crate is a den muggles muggles no muggles no so now secondarily if you have a dog and they have separation based behaviors and you're concerned it might be separation anxiety which can be a nightmare it could be very hard uh, -uh no wait lucky wait okay break Um, then really be careful about starting a relationship with that dog that is one that is not based on leadership, not based on trust and respect, but it's based on, you know, codependency and, you know, somebody kind of wanting to coddle the dog and be emotionally soft with the dog and essentially try to spoil the separation anxiety out of the dog. And it's the exact opposite of what you want to do. You know, most likely the dog who has the separation anxiety, if they do, they had a very unhealthy relationship with their human where they did not feel calm, truly calm. If the dog truly feels calm around you, like truly zened out, they're not going to be an anxiously anticipating you coming back. But if there is this clingy behavior and clinginess to you, yeah, the dog, when you leave, they're going to freaking lose their mind. So, you know, people will... Like, if I had a dog with separation anxiety... Hey, come on, Luck. Come on, Lucky. I would immediately just be going, Hey, um, just FYI, you're not following me around the house the whole time. You're not going to follow me around. Every time I go to the bathroom, you're not coming in the bathroom, dude. No. I would immediately start creating boundaries from the beginning. Even if that's just, hey, you're going to sleep in the crate and the crate's right next to our bed, but you're not sleeping in the bed with us. 
So that's all, folks. Hopefully your dog doesn't have true separation anxiety. Um, you know, there are ways to stop these behaviors in the crate. If you want to reach out personally, I can talk more about that. If somebody wants me to make a video on that, I can. But, um, you know, the reality is separation anxiety is pretty rare. Mostly it's usually just people that have inadvertently reinforced bad behaviors in their dogs and trainers that don't know how to stop unwanted behaviors. And so they just go, oh, he's anxious. And then they kind of are, I think, alleviated of responsibility. You know, it's kind of like aggression. There's a lot of trainers that'll be like, he's aggressive, he's dangerous. And so they don't have to train the dog. But a lot of times we find the dog's actually not that dangerous at all. The dog is just very confused. So that's all folks. Hope you found this video helpful. And I hope this does help you with that Husky. Even if it's just to give you one little thing to think about or one little tidbit. Um, but that's all folks. As always, we don't blame them. We train them. And until then, we'll see you next time, folks.